Hey y'all, in this video, I'm gonna give you guys the truth about booking more shows. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Ruslan. I am a hip hop artist, creative entrepreneur based in beautiful San Diego, California. It's a little overcast right now, so I guess it's not that beautiful. I am doing VEDA, which is vlog every single day in April. I'm gonna be releasing content every day. Yesterday I did a video about three ways to break writer's block. And so today I'm gonna address, actually a comment from yesterday's video that asked me about booking more shows booking more shows you guys aren't gonna like this answer uh, because booking shows isn't what you think it is here's what I mean we see a lot of people on tour we see a lot of people doing their thing we're trying to figure out yo I'm an independent artist how can I book some of my own shows and the truth is most times you're not ready yet that's the unfortunate truth is you're not ready yet you're just starting out you're not ready to perform you're not ready you don't really have a demand and I don't mean to oversimplify but most of what we're dealing with in the music industry is about supply and demand most of what we're dealing with in the economy is about supply and demand do you have a demand for your services do you probably not yet and a lot of times folks that are coming up in the Christian space, they are kind of inflating demand because you have a lot more shows, if you're a Christian artist, CHH artist, gospel artist, that have built-in audiences, meaning the audiences aren't even, um, they're not really paying money to be there. It's a youth group, it's a young adult group, it's a church service. So that's the reality and so how do you build demand right that is the question well guess what nowadays you guys have the internet you can build your spotify monthly followers your instagram followers you can build facebook likes you can build twitter followers most importantly those are all just means to an end the means to that end is to build a connection with your audience to build a connection with your audience to the point where they will eventually pay money to come and see you perform but again i think most of you guys are way premature about that to try to think even i'm in a place where like i'm reevaluating how i'm doing touring like i've done touring last year we did like a three-week tour me and john keith we traveled all over the country and it was some really cool shows but there was also some kind of whack shows you know what i mean a lot of whack shows if i'm gonna be honest with you guys and so i know touring seems sexy i know it seems like everybody's doing their thing and you're like oh i'm missing out but that's 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 a part of the grind so my advice to you guys how to book more shows is first try to even understand what shows are shows and touring in a real world capacity is about hard ticket sales do people want to pay money to see you perform probably not but some markets maybe they do so you can look at your top cities on uh, Spotify where you got your most monthly listeners and maybe if you have uh, 10,000 people that listen to you regularly in Dallas maybe you can convert uh, two percent of those people and 200 people can show up for a show by the way that's about on par with what most people end up doing is, is anywhere from two to 10%. And even those numbers can be inflated if you're getting playlisted a lot. So I think we have to understand like what touring is. Now, here's some practical alternatives and I'll leave you one point on, if you are getting requests for shows, if you are getting hit up, maybe you got some clout, you got some buzz, I'll give you guys one tip on how to actually facilitate that in a cleaner way. But I'll give you guys some tips if you're just starting out. The most important thing if you're just starting out and you don't really have a demand yet, is stage time, stage time, stage time. Find some open mics in your city. I just was going to some of our open mics in San Diego because I had a big showcase and I needed to kind of workshop some of my material, my new material, my new poems, spoken word poems. Now, I do spoken word, maybe you don't do spoken word, maybe you just do music, that's all right. 
find some open mics and get stage time. A lot of times, stage time, just going to open mics will put you in a network with other real artists, as in like they're tangible, they're human, they're not just on the internet. And you can build relationships, you can get to more open mics, and maybe you can finesse a showcase. Uh, all this stuff is gonna be free initially, but I think open mics are probably one of the most underutilized things in music and there's a lot of them there's a there's i was i'm again i'm in san diego i was looking up and we have an open mic almost every night of the week that serve to a variety of different niches uh it used to just be spoken word open mics now there's music open mics there's comedy open mics so there's a lot of open mics take advantage of that here's my last tip if you are in a place where you're actually you got some clout you got some buzz the show requests are coming in we get show requests pretty probably like once or twice a week we get show requests either for me or for john keith or whoever basic format basic format get yourself an agreement a little writer agreement you could google those you could find yourself a cool one and the key question and when people are reaching out for shows is what is your budget what is your budget? What is your budget is a quick way to help determine your value in specific markets. Meaning the budget to pay me to do a club show is gonna be way different than the budget to pay me to do a college show. It's gonna be different than the budget to pay me to do a, uh, a youth group show or a church show. So ask them what their budget is. That is the magic question in most negotiations. If people are reaching you out for features, if people are reaching out for shows, because what it does is, is it puts the ball in their court and it gives you a fair assessment of what your market rate is. If all of a sudden you're getting hit up for shows, you ask what the budget is, and people are like, yo, budget is $1,000. And you're like, oh, I would've never charged $1,000. But that's the offer you keep getting. Well, now you know what your budget is in those specific niches. But don't get that confused with your hard ticket value. Just because you get $1,000 to play a youth group or $1,000 to play a college, that doesn't mean that's what you're gonna sell in tickets. So if somebody, if a promoter reaches out and says, yo, I want you to come and play at such and such venue, I'm renting out the club or a theater or a concert hall, uh, and you're like, oh, I'm on thousand dollars because the youth group guy offered me a thousand dollars, or the college offered me a thousand dollars. Not the same thing, guys. Not the same thing. So, to summarize, to bring a full circle, my my first point is, if you're thinking about booking shows, it's probably premature. You really got to get your numbers up. You got to get your cloud up. You don't want to be doing a bunch of trash shows. And number two is utilize those open mics utilize those open mics that's how you're going to get better at shows that's how you're going to build relationships with the local community that's how you're going to really be able to connect with people so to utilize the open mic scene there's a lot of cool open mics all over the country and if you're not in a city that has an open mic yo um start your own open mic what you worried about start your own get it going we've been doing open mics i've hosted open mics multiple several open mics over the years and number three is if people are reaching out and you do have your cloud up, the question is, what is your budget? That's gonna be a fair way for you to gauge what the budget is, what can they afford, and what your value is in that specific niche. But don't get it confused with hard ticket draw, with selling tickets. Don't get it confused. Now, this is what we do. You guys can go to kingstreament.com forward slash booking. We have little forms. If anybody wants to book us for a show or just see our process, you can see the whole process. It's very simple. But something we're doing is we're going to be looking at consistently keeping an eye at our top Spotify cities, our top Instagram follower cities. Hopefully, Apple Music gives us access to their back end. And we are going to use a website called Peerspace. Check it out. Well, we're just going to book our own venues and throw our own shows. I've done this a couple times in Chicago. I've done this in LA. Here's the deal, though. You got to carry the financial risk. You got to carry the financial risk. So we booked a venue in LA, spent a thousand dollars on it. Thankfully, we was able to sell a little bit over 200 tickets. We knew we have a hard ticket draw in LA. It's one of our top cities. If you're really serious about doing shows and you think you got the clout, but you're not getting booked yet, maybe start out by finding a venue, booking a venue, booking a sound system, uh, and throwing your own show and going and selling a bunch of tickets to your fans in the area, your friends and your family, and working hard. So that's a practical walk away. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. Because the truth is to get to really touring, to get to that next level, it requires a lot of clout, a lot of hard work, a lot of numbers, a lot of fans, and eventually partnering with some type of agency that can get you into consistently touring venues and hard tickets. So hopefully that helps. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. Once again, my name is Ruslan, hip hop artist, creative entrepreneur, Kingstream, ENT.com. And something cool I'm doing this month is we're live streaming the Indie Jones three sessions on Patreon. So if you're not a Patreon yet, that's how you know you get your music heard 
early on Fridays, you get to cut the line. Another thing that Patreon does is it gives you the opportunity to, um, gives you the opportunity to get your music heard, gives you, uh, give, gives you the opportunity to hop in a, a Zoom call with me every Sunday night, and I'm daily streaming on YouTube, but it's an unlisted link on YouTube that goes to Patreon. You get to see all the behind the scenes, how I record my music, how I do everything. It's on YouTube through Patreon, only for Patreon, live streaming every single day on top of doing these Vader videos. Thank you so much for watching this piece.